Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and I've got Dale my good friend Dale from uh, I forgot where he's from I forgot where he's from but I know it's Porsche <laughs> I, know, I forgot where he's from but I know his birds fit <laughs> so other than that I'm okay let's have a look yeah I'm all right I'm plodding on there I'm hanging in there as you do so I'm gonna have a chat with Dale <coughs> I'm still not 100% this f flu is uh, hammering me and uh, I'm uh, I'm just about finished my book. If you want to read a good book for this Christmas, Jane Couch, The Final Round. Go and get Jane Couch's book. If you want to read a good book. Steffi, if you want to read a good book, Steffi, in between doing your training sessions at gym, go and get Jane Couch's book, Steffi, because she punches like a mule. She punches harder than you, Steffi. <laughs> go get that, Steffi. Go treat your last to a nice book. All right. Your last can... Uh, get her head round this, it's a good book for women this so right this is uh, my good friend Dale how are you doing Dale? yeah good mate yeah I'm alright mate I'm plodding on as you do uh, what's happening in the world of boxing then? Clash on the Dunes. In Saudi Arabia. The mm. Clash on the Dunes. They were pulling it as it's going to be this big massive war. You know, they're all, it, it's going to be a fucking slugfest. What was it? Yeah, uh, er. Of shit. Yeah, it won, uh It, it won what they said it were, was it? We got served up poo. That's exactly what we got served up. Poo on toast. Andy Ruiz, disgrace. He's let himself down, if anything else. Yeah. Turns up 20 stone, took the lard, hasn't trained at all. Mitchell in man. Basically a journeyman who's coming for his paycheck. Yeah. No ambition to win, no front foot. In, you know, no offence on the front foot. Nothing. Happy to just let Joshua pop the jab out at him all night, take his 20 million and fuck off. Yeah. You know I can't edit Dale, so you've just done me out and a quid there swearing. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Alright, yeah. Well, Don't worry about it. Yeah, go on. It's borderline disgusting, really. Yeah. And he's got the cheek, the cheek at the final bell to even suggest a third fight in a rematch that's to me he's all premeditated it's someone going in who already knows he's got no no way of winning the fight no ambition to win the fight to even think about at the end of the fight straight away come back with I want a third fight uh, it's premeditated he knew he was going in there and losing his job because he was too overweight yeah but didn't he say he had an injury in camp They were saying they couldn't and all that. I think they just wanted to get the money. Because they were on good money, weren't they? Turned up, took his money and gone. I, my mole in the hole said to me, uh, Ruiz has picked up an injury and he's not training. And I said, he's going to pull out, he's going to pull out. So I said, uh, I've heard that Ruiz is going to pull out. Obviously he didn't pull out, but apparently they tried though. But I've also heard off a good source, somebody who Dennis knows, that... Ruiz has got a contract stating that he's due a third fight if he lost. So I don't. And he's lost. So, so has he got a fight down the line or? Oh, I mean, I what? Know, we'll, we'll talk about the heavyweight landscape now if you wanna. 
Yeah, go on then, right. And, and my prediction on how I think it'll pan out over the next six months. Go on then. Okay. Right. So, obviously they're already putting plenty out there on Sky Sports with it, you know, with the 12 hours and the fact that they've got mandatory. So the WBR president has already tweeted it out. Coogan's already put him on the spot. It's already, you know, so we, we can't get carried away in all this wilder talk or fury talk. Or even fury power! Fury power! They've shut that down straight away. <laughs> what, Fury Power? He's going to be fighting a mandatory next. This much we know for certain. <coughs> so, I actually think that the favourable option at this point in time would be for Joshua to fight Pulev. Pulev is the most, is the least dangerous option to Joshua. They could just fight no problem with the IBF with him being the mandatory. And it's, it, it, he should win as a canter, really, shouldn't he? There's no doubt about that. Well, I think they're so, going to go for Pulev so next because... Pulev next year. Next fight. He will fight Kubra at Pulev. Pulev's 39, isn't he? When they fight in June. He's 39, isn't he? Right, so... So he's going to be in his 40th year when they fight. Now, Povetkin wore into his 40th year when he fought Joshua. I mean, how many more of these guys is... Uh, who, who have been nearly men. I mean, Povetkin and Pula for nearly men, aren't they? Right? Povetkin, yeah, he won an Olympic gold and he won regular belt, but technically, Povetkin's always been known as a nearly man, hasn't he? And Pulev's a nearly... He's like a gatekeeper, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's a European level fighter, isn't he? Has Pulev fought Chisora? Yeah, he beat him on a split decision about so, three years ago, didn't he? So, Chisora... Lost to Pulev. Yui Fury lost to Pulev. Right? And he, Pulev's lost to Vladimir. So how is Pulev? How are they going to sell this? He's only ever been beat by one guy, Vladimir. Is that how they're going to sell it? This is exactly the same as what they did with Povetkin, really. He's only ever mm. lost to Vladimir. Mm. Another thing as well, right? What they're going to say is, Anthony Joshua's beat everybody he's fought. That's what you're going to get now. He's beat everybody that he's been in with. Olympic shades gold. But they're not shades of... Shades of, shades of Jack Dempsey and all that rolled into one. Ali Marciano. What people are forgetting is this. The actual story. The narrative that Sky are going to push does, isn't true. It's not the exact full story because... Yes, Joshua won a gold medal in London. But out of the four fights, he only beat the Chinaman, didn't he? The other three fights, you could make a strong case for him losing them. Rob Camarelli were disgusted with with the the uh, the count back. I mean, they're doing a count back in London where Joshua's from. We're never going to win it. We're never going to get a decision, were we? Now, so Joshua had a gift at Olympics. He had a gift with Charles Martin. He, he went from Gary Cornish to winning world title. I mean, who fights Gary Cornish? And then in the next fight, you win a world title. Was it Gary Cornish? And then he, then, then he won and fought for a world title. Was it Dillian White? Cornish, then White. Cornish, Cornish, White. Sorry, I got that wrong. So it was Gary Cornish, who Dave Allen knocked out in sparring in Peter Fury's gym inside 30 seconds. Dave just went out and went, boom. Big Dave Allen iced him, Cornish. Jelly legs. Now... Gary Cornish, Dillian White coming off a two year drug ban and Dillian White were overweight and out of shape and then he fights for a world title so Joshua's story it's not the story the Sky are pushing for example let's look at the guys who, who, who Joshua's beat who are his wins Dale over world champions yeah. Martin? Charles Martin. Charles Martin. What did Ring Magazine say about Charles Martin? Worst world champion ever. Worst world champion ever. Right. So, Charlie Martin hard at way. Ring Magazine also say the, the worst ever welterweight champion for punch power is Paulie Malignaggi. <laughs> but getting back to uh, Joshua... 
Charlie Martin, that's his first world champion beat. So we all agree that he's crap, don't we? Right. Vladimir Klitschko was the second one that he beat. What do we think to Vladimir? In his 42nd year, in his last fight, his 69th, and he'd been 18 months on settee. Am I right? Coming off a loss. Coming off a bad loss, schooling by Fury. Yeah? So we don't give we don't give Charlie Martin a tick and we don't give Vladimir a tick, us hard course. Third one, who was that? Parker? Parker, yeah. Parker was an active champion, but Parker had never beat a champion. Parker had never beat a champion, he was an active champion and it was a stinker and they had an hometown ref. Am I right? Correct. Who were ref Phil Edwards? I can't remember. No, it was that, uh... Like Which one did Phil Edwards referee? No, Tackham. It was a complete unknown. Who did Phil Edwards mess up in refereeing the Joshua fight with the Tackham one? Yeah, that's right. I think it was Phil Edwards, right? So, so Char so Parker, the third one, that was smelly, and he'd never really. He was like a paper champion. If you've not beat a champion and you've got a belt, you're classed as a paper champion, aren't you? So Parker's a paper. Eh? Yeah, like Tony Bellew, yeah. So he's a paper champion, so that's free. The fourth one, Povetkin, he were a regular champion in his 40th year, am I right? Career best win, Marco Hook, who's a, career, who's a cruiserweight. Yeah, Povetkin's best wins, Marco Hook, and he's a cruiserweight. And the fifth one, Andy Ruiz, who'd already beat him first. Now... I said when Joshua got that belt that what they were gonna when he beat Charlie Martin, I said they're gonna slip and slide and they're gonna protect him, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that, they're gonna do a Sven Otke. They did a Sven Otke with him, and that's exactly what's happened. And along the way, they had Louis Ortiz, they signed him a Southpaw with an Olympic pedigree, and they pushed it Louis Ortiz to the side. Now they've signed Usek, and they pushed him to the side, they're not going to go anywhere near him, it's a business decision to sign these people, and what they're doing, they're opening up the routes for Joshua to keep going through and earning, the main thing is that Joshua keeps earning money for the Hearns, right, that's the cash cow, they've never had a cash cow like it, cash cow like it, and this, opportunities like this in boxing only come across once, now they've had it before with Chris Eubank, the old man and they milked him to death and he and it was the same path they did the same thing with Eubank and what they're doing now it's the same strategy uh, but the only difference is it's on a bigger scale now so what 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 do you think about that what we've just spoke about All time great. Fuck. Shocking, Dale, isn't it? Pavetkin Hunter. Pavetkin or Fight White. 
Do you reckon? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because they can say, well, he's only been beat by Joshua and Vladimir after he got that uh, draw the weekend. Oh, man. And it's a credible name on White's record. Keeps him on pay per view because it's a relevant name. Well, you know you, I mean? you, everything's there, it ticks all the boxes, and they've already put the figures out for it. Right, why do you think, Dale? Towards the back end of the year, we might get Walder Fury too. Uh, or probably get Joshua against Usyk. 